Hello and welcome to the Q&A for Murina by Antonetta Alamat Kusianovic. We have with us Antonetta here. Hello and welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Congratulations on your beautiful film. It's your debut, which recently won the Camera Door Prize in Cannes, no less. Congratulations. And I'd love to start by asking you to take us through the journey of how the film came to be. Uh, wow, well, thank you very much for inviting me to Toronto. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here among this amazing group of people. Uh, Murina, um, yes, uh, Murina started long before it started. <laughs> uh, it was with my short film Into the Blue that I shot in 2016. Uh, that's when I discovered Grazia Filipovic, uh, my my main protagonist, my main character, protagonist, and actress in in Murina. Um, I really loved being in that world of Into the Blue and I wanted to stay longer with water and the nature of the island and this hormonal changes that happen in adolescence. It felt that that's the world that I have much more to say about and explore, especially um, about violence, that it's in conflict within ourselves and violence in the in the uh, nature outside so with the nature within and nature that uh, outside of us and um then i decided to place that character in a slightly different family and um a few years later and i wrote morena with frank graziano my co-writer uh, well, as you mentioned, Grazia, your lead, who was Into the Blue, uh, worked with you previously. Can you tell us how you worked with her differently to prepare for the lead role rather than her, her role in your short? Uh, yes, uh, I first realized that uh, working with Grazia, it's really important that the team around her, that it, it's kind of ensemble of actors who are always together almost in each scene, it was really important to find the right, of course, actors, but also people who are going to understand what it means to support a non-actor her age. And I, it's, I spent a year casting uh, mother and father and, and the Javier character. And I would confront Grazia with those actors in the small workshops of three to five days. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I assembled the family. Once all actors were chosen uh, after those, let's say, six workshops, I've spent um, over a month with them on an island. Mm -hmm. There were some technical rehearsals um, and preparations, like for underwater diving, um, mm -hmm. you know, being on a boat so it feels real, um, hunting, all these visual things that need to feel like a second nature. Mm -hmm. But also, as a family, uh, they, um, they really lived together with me. Mm -hmm. And we had these rehearsals that lasted sometimes six to eight hours at a time, where they were in the character, cooking, fishing, being together. And uh, I would just alter their characters once they would move out of the direction that I was interested in to explore. But this is actually how we went through the script. We did not go through actual scenes as much mm -hmm. or as what happens outside of the scenes and outside of the life that was portrayed on screen. Mm -hmm. I, I like what you say about the underwater parts needing to feel natural because that, that was my next question. I was wondering if you have experience with diving, if this is something that you yourself were familiar with before setting the film there. Yeah, I grew up um, most of my childhood and adolescence as well on an island with my grandmother and my great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my, my parents would park me there <laughs> uh, as soon as the school was done. So, yes, I did grow up with, you know, in the, in the hordes with different other kids. We would, like, 
you know, built our um, temples and our uh, uh, fortresses, have a wars and really live like, you know, creatures of the sea like that. And that is more, um, more personal to me into the blue in Morina. It was more of that setting, but yes, the sea is very, very important to me. It's really something I feared the most and mm -hmm. I'm a most, um, um, drawn to. So can it was you, easy. Yeah. No, please, please continue. So, so it was easy to visualize that world and to, um, be fully immersed in it. Can you, uh, was there a particular uh, specification to the islands you chose to shoot on and the locations you had to do with your childhood? Yeah. We were shooting kind of all over Croatia. Um, it was not the easiest <clears throat> uh, thing to do for the production, but it was very important for me, the locations I chose, because I did... I was aware that shooting in Croatia and the seaside could very easily feel like, uh, you know, a summer postcard. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really wanted to avoid. I wanted the, the film to feel claustrophobic. I wanted this beauty to have another edge. So um, I, I was particularly looking for locations that had no vegetation. So mm -hmm. if you know, uh, all the islands, they have no shade. The house has no green. Uh, if there is some trees, it's mostly olive that is grayish and like stone. So everything, what I was looking for needed to feel as like white, mm. as a plate on which the characters are like raw meat. They are burning under the heat. There's no place to hide, no shade to rethink their emotions everything is very uh, abrupt and they're simmering and coming to the surface that was very important for me and then juxtaposition to that is of course underwater that is completely different it's it's fresh it's mystical you can dive deeper you can hide under the rocks you can find some shelter but yet there's another luring fear there so um that one was for me very much subconscious uh, for mm -hmm. yulia her her world where she can spill blood where she can desire things that are not allowed for her on the surface and the surface had to be the place of no time to think. It was just reaction, just hormones, just impulse. Hmm. The, the way you describe the, the settings, which are so powerful in your film, makes me realize that the production was probably pretty challenging itself. And I wonder if you can tell us any difficult scenes that came to mind. What was the most challenging to shoot for you? Uh, for, for sure, it was the finale with the cave scene. Uh, we were looking for that location for a very long time, of course, both for like reality of it and safety. And um, we were planning to shoot that in the studio and to just build mm. that set. And then my grandmother said, no, 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 there is this great cave. It's mm. outside the island, under the lighthouse. There's no electricity, there's no access, but maybe you can go there by the boat. Because when I was young, I used to dive there. And it was, wow. she was right. It was this cave that, that, that was um, surrounded by the rocks, but it wasn't covered. So we as a team could be on the top of the cave looking at the actor down and the actor and the camera and the sound and safety people were there. Uh, it was a 40 meter deep cave that had another end that had a light coming through. So it was very, of course, extremely challenging, but it was completely wild with no access of light that would, you know, break our set. And we could light the underwater ourselves. Uh, Ellen Luva was just an amazing collaborator to work with and the camera operator underwater. And uh, Mika was as well, great team. So we managed to really capture that scene as real as it was possible with, with 
within our production capacity. But also that scene was challenging because it felt so real on set. It felt mm. real and scary to be in that space. And um, I think for Grazia also, the setting helped, but also some some sort of um, some sort of emotion surfaced for her where that was one of the easiest scenes for her to deliver. Something we I was scared the most of it came the easiest because it was very orgasmic and those emotions of such it's very hard to rehearse to prepare and to really even understand how they can come together. That's beautiful. I'm I'm also really glad you mentioned Hélène Louvard, who of course shot the film. She's so prolific. Can you tell us more about the decision to work with her and what that was like? Uh, it was a very easy decision. <laughs> of course, I knew I want to work with her and, and who wouldn't want. Um, she's a very uh, she's a very fascinating person. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very good friend and very very excellent collaborator she makes things easy which are she makes things simple and we know that when it's simple there's a lot of work and steps behind that are quite complicated to make it feel so light and so so flawless um so i, I we, we spent some time together um looking at locations back in December and then April. Uh, she was with me for 20 days and we were brainstorming on how we want to tell this story. And what was really impressive to me is the way she reads the script and the way she reads you as a person in a way you want to tell that story. And she completely adjusts to that. And then once on set, there's another level where she's really... Um, very skillful. Uh, she has really, uh, of course, she's a skillful cinematographer, but what I'm saying is she's very skillful to understand how to manage it, how to capture it on actor stanima, mm. stamina, <laughs> and how to, um, how to take the moment. Uh, and that was very... Um, very, very helpful to work with her and to run through this shoot with her because it was a very challenging 42 day shoot with mm -hmm. with uh, no space for uh, you know second chance. So she was a great mm -hmm. collaborator. I'd love I'd love to know more about you because it's such a successful first film. Obviously, you're very talented and you've, you've had a lot of great help as well. But I know you did a lot of labs, you did a lot of preparation to get the film off the ground. It's a Croatian-Brazilian co-production, which is quite unique. And I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your journey of how, how you really got this independent film made. Um, I just graduated from Colombia in 2017 when RT features uh, decided to support Morena. Mm. Uh, we we really decided to work together based on a letter of intention, or mm. even like a. Um, it was a little bit more than a letter of intention. It was something between letter of intention and a very loose treatment. They mm -hmm. so much love the blue and the story. Uh, that I was interested to explore next. And um, then I started writing the script and I attended, yes, uh, Cine Fondacion and Jerusalem Film Lab and First Film First with Goethe Institute. Mm -hmm. And uh, these labs are very useful to confront your ideas with others because uh, it's a lonely process sometimes to be in a room alone or with your co-writer and to get into this, you know, cocoon. Um, yet it's, you know, we should never forget that films are made for the audience and your first audience are, are those audiences on your labs. And mm -hmm. I was very attuned to listen to what worked for people, what people responded to, what they did not respond to. Uh, of course, um, that didn't shift what I wanted to tell. My story was 
uh, still the one that I wrote in my letter of intention. And that was always kind of my Bible that I went back to, to remind myself, what is the story that I'm telling? But those labs were checkpoints of, do people follow me on the way of the story I want to tell? And uh, that that is my role of a, as a director, is to be, of course, devoted to my story and married to that story, but to make sure that I'm followed by the audience while I'm emotionally, most most importantly, emotionally, while I'm telling that story. That's great. Well, it's been really fun getting to know you. And I have one last question, which is a bit more general and about you. And that's just what inspires you as an artist. Can be anything. Yeah, that's a very uh, yeah, charged question. Uh, it can very easily be uh, answered simple, and those are hard. <laughs> um, I'm always inspired by people. Um, and um, sometimes I don't realize right away which people have inspired me. Sometimes it comes later with time that I realize that something sticks with me and I understand it takes years to understand why. But um, uh, nothing, not, nothing can inspire by people, but like people, and especially if you have a chance to uh, meet people on their crossroads. Mm. I think that that's the most interesting thing to observe. Um, and nothing that does not stand strong in front of death is important to me to portray. So. It's always the projects that I'm inclined to are those that feel important to make, even if I would die tomorrow. So that that's how I, I choose my next subject. <laughs> that was a perfect answer. You've captured my Eastern European heart completely. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna say that I'm so happy to meet you. I'm so happy to have the film showing in Toronto. I hope you will come with your next one in person when this hellscape is over, if that ever happens. And congratulations for everything. Thank you very much. And uh, congratulations on the festival. And I wish you all the best. Bye.